All right. Well, it may be the biggest purchase of most people's lives, but a new bank rate survey shows more than a quarter of mortgage holders don't know their current interest rate. <laughs> In all fairness, I just bought a house like a month ago, so I do know my I interest rate. I hope you rate. remember I that. do remember <laughs> it, yes. But I think that this is a good topic because a lot of people are looking at refinancing right now just right. as we're seeing the interest rates being cut. Uh, but interesting that... 27% of mortgage holders, they have no idea what theirs is. Not well, a clue. Riley, don't you think like after you initial 476 <laughs> pages to get your mortgage, like how are you supposed to remember what the number well, was? Well, I have to say when wow. you do buy a house, I, when, I, when the stack of papers were get, yeah. got in front of me, it was like this, and I was like, well, this is going to take all day. Mm -hmm. By the time you're done signing your name, you're just like, can I just have a glass of wine? Right. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even know what I'm signing yeah. anymore. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, going back, I owned a house several years ago, and I'm trying to think, I don't, I'm probably in the 27, well, I am, because yeah. I don't remember it um, right now. Right now, I rent. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the reason this is important is because uh, one analyst says nearly 8 million homeowners could be qualifying to save significant money mm -hmm. because rates have been cut so low. Mm -hmm. So this survey from Bankrate found that 11% of respondents have rates of 6% or That's more. That's high. Mm -hmm. It is high. And now some of those people are not going to be able to qualify for a two and a half or a 3.25 or whatever kind of low rate you can get. Uh, but some of them probably oh, would. Yeah. And right? they say, they say yeah, even just one percentage difference can make a huge difference mm -hmm. in your Oh, for payments. sure. And some of that conventional wisdom that you have to make a 1% drop to make it worthwhile is going out the window that you actually might be able to make a significant dent in your payment uh, in your own financial well-being by going even down a half well, point or three so quarters. Especially, especially on how big your mortgage is. So to, to refinance, I mean, you have to have what qualifications, good credit. I mean, based on like your house, and there, like that, right? Yeah, there are two main factors that people look at. First of all, the main one is your credit mm -hmm. score. How is your credit? But the second thing is that people often, when they get their first mortgage, maybe you put 10% down, mm -hmm. you have PMI where you're paying that right. extra fee. Well, your house has gone up in value. You've been making payments. Mm -hmm. So you may your have enough. Be better. That's right. And you may have enough equity in your home mm -hmm. yeah. where you don't need to pay that PMI anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You need a smaller percentage loan and then you can qualify for it. And you just rate. want to make sure that whatever the difference is, it's enough to make it worthwhile to pay oh. those closing costs again, right. you know? So. But knowing that most people plan on staying in their home forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's you have a little more freedom. If it takes mm -hmm. you two and a half, three years to earn that money back, so what? You're going to be in that house forever, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, it was interesting yeah. to note that the research said, I think, was it 56%? 56% yeah. of people they're said they're in their forever home. Yeah. yeah, they're never moving. Good. Loop. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. moving Congrats. isn't fun. Trust oh, me. I just no, did it. I'm still unpacking. <laughs> that's right. And that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend, just staying home. <laughs>